Hello, everybody, and welcome to the top sources of business in residential real estate for 2021. This is a labor of love. This is something we've been doing for 13 years. <clears throat> I invest the entire 12 months of the previous year analyzing what the top realtors are doing across the country and really breaking it down into some fundamental opportunities for you to kind of demonstrate what these elite residential real estate agents are doing. And uh, then we present it every year uh, just before Thanksgiving and in on-demand libraries across the country with our real estate referral partners. Uh, so you might be attending this in a National Lunch and Learn League environment. You might be attending this in a sales meeting at your brokerage. You might even be attending this one-on-one -on -one with your mortgage partner at Annie Mac Home Mortgage. And most of our viewership is through our on-demand library, which is incredible to see hundreds of thousands of views uh, building up across the country from realtors. So welcome here. My name is uh, Russ Fitzpatrick. I'm one of the lucky founders of the Annie Mac Works real estate productivity platform. We help realtors from every real estate company across the country uh, with some technology called My Work Suite. That's absolutely free. Free to use. My work suite represents some clickbait technology to bring in some leads for our real estate referral partners. And the rest of the platform is centered around teaching, uh, training, and coaching our real estate referral partners towards best practices and higher productivity, higher income. That's our goal. So thank you very much for taking some time with us. Before I get into the sources of business, I apologize if I sound a little preachy, but um, my great observation about the haves and the have-nots in real estate have more to do with uh, desire and persistence than it does with opportunity. The realistic uh, situation is just who's willing to do the work. It's not who's able. I mean, most of us are able to do the work, but who's willing to do the work? And um, Calvin Coolidge said it best when he said, nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. I know really great salespeople who are broke in residential real estate. I know uh, genius will not. Just because you're 150 IQ and, and uh, you know, have this tremendous charisma and gift to gab, it doesn't mean you're going to be successful in residential real estate. And, and education will not. You can learn something today. And uh, hell, the world is full of educated derelicts. But persistence and your determination alone are omnipotent. And the slogan Press On has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. Calvin Coolidge uh, led a nation through some devastating times and uh, falls on that quote as one of my ultimate favorites. At the moment of commitment, you will find that these visionary real estate professionals are working at a different, from a different perspective is all, right? What are the 15 best sources of business from the highest and farthest perspective to invest your time or their time doing? You probably have a worksheet with you. If you don't, just start at number 15 and work your way up to number one. We're gonna go pretty quick. Number 15 is your friends and family. The average realtor reacts to the needs of their friends and family. This activity accounts for the first three or four transactions per year for an average member of NAR. You want to understand that the way that you dress, the way that you talk, your vocabulary, your cadence, your professionalism or lack of thereof is going to determine how your friends and your family perceive you as a full-time residential real estate professional. Number 14 in 2022, studying all of the real estate professionals in our network and across the country and asking pointed questions, social media is the first free way that you start to prove you're credible as a realtor. This is where you use proven content on your social media pages Rather than taking pictures of the bikini on Saturday morning or the martini on Friday night, you're starting to look at elevating your credibility as a real estate professional 
reminding your followers that you're a full-time committed career-oriented professional and ask them for the business and ask them for the referrals. This is number 14 and you need to be doing it regularly. There's someone that you graduated high school from that has a fond memory of you. And that person would use you to buy or sell real estate if they thought you were a credible, full-time, career-oriented professional. But they don't know that you are because so many of our real estate professionals are, are, are putting pictures of their puppy and their chicken pot pie, but they're not putting pictures of the real estate that they've sold because maybe they didn't sell any real estate or maybe the real estate they sold, they, didn't, they just didn't brag about. We're going to show you some techniques here today to get you promoting your credibility through social media. If you make less than $100,000 a year selling real estate, and you're not doing 40, 50 open houses a year, I can't help you. I mean, open houses are so old. I don't have any listings. I don't have any listings. I can't, I can't, um, I can't do open houses because I don't have any listings. You know, there's an excuse for everybody and everybody's got an excuse, but putting a few signs in the ground to meet a half a dozen people on a Saturday or Sunday is the best use of your time if you're not already doing six figures a year in real estate. I promise you that. Number 13 on our top 15 sources of business is open houses or mega open houses. We do a class on mega open houses at AnnieMacWorks.com. You know, I use the term a fortunate study. There was a study done many, many years ago that showed me that about half of all the people that ever visit an open house have a property that they need to sell before they could buy a home. So a lot of the bug's eye view crowd views open house visitors that still own a home as what they call a looky-loo or like a tire kicker. And, And this study that I was exposed to where it told me as a real estate professional that 50% of all the people that come into an open house have to sell a house before they could buy a house. Well, I started to create a listing opportunity in those open house visitors because I learned that you must list to last. And I think 2022 might even be list or die because, you know, Zillow and Realtor.com and a hundred different FinTech companies, FinTech companies that are coming up through the woodwork are really posing themselves to to you know sell you leads or refer you leads and they they're the only way to beat them is to get the listings so you've got to start to think about listing inventory and I always like to say if if if, if you don't want to be listings it's kind of like running a shoe store without shoes right not a lot of people are going to come into a shoe store that doesn't have any shoes on the shelves So you've got to see yourself as a listing magnet, and that's why we're doing the open houses in addition. Now, friends and family were number 15, but sphere of influence campaigning is different than reacting to your friends and family. The 12th most productive source of business in 2021 will certainly be sphere of influence campaigning. We see the best realtors in the country mining a database, making outgoing email direct mail and telephone contacts with them regularly, focusing on things like long-term commitments to holiday cards, handwritten notes, uh, market updates that are specific to their geography or their subdivision, announcing that we just listed this house, we just sold this house. And I wanna revisit the word we and I over and over again, because some of our realtor partners are emerging realtors and they don't have a lot of I stories, right? They don't have a listing to sit an open house at, but we collectively can use the brokerage's accomplishments as our collective accomplishments. So when you say we just sold, you're talking about your brokerage. When you say we just listed, you're talking about your brokerage to help you build up your credibility. This sphere of influence campaigning is one of those time on task over time events, right? It's not that you sent holiday cards. It's not that you did handwritten notes. It's not that you sent them email trip campaign or, or brag to them about your just listings and just sold. It's that you did it regularly. 
over time that they start to see you as a full-time career oriented, you know, residential real estate professional, not a dabbler, not a part-timer, and not somebody who's trying residential real estate, but really committed to it. And the last line before our website there is get a Twilio account or an SMS Magic account. This is a a kind of a nitrous oxide level boost to your performance within your sphere of influence campaigning. Because when I talk to customers who are shopping for residential real estate, they don't answer their phone. And a lot of them don't even read their emails as frequently as if they get a text. So start to understand how texting is changing the way that American real estate is being communicated by our real estate professionals. So look into a Twilio account or an SMS Magic account and see if you can get ahead of the game a little bit in that regard. You know, whenever an investment cycle outperforms Warren Buffett, everyone starts to doubt the old codger and says, ah, Warren Buffett must have lost his marbles. He doesn't know how this works anymore. I feel the exact same way about number 11. You know, door knocking around one of the listings that your brokerage just sold sounds so old school, sounds so antiquated in the weird world of fintechs and texting and technology and social media. But I can promise you, whenever all the sheep are running in one direction, they're usually going off a cliff. And uh, there's always one little black sheep in the group that's going the opposite direction. And I'd like you to think about being that one. Belly button to belly button, eyeball to eyeball, personal interaction. Hey, I'm sorry to bother you here on a Wednesday night. You know, I waited until after the dinner hour to hopefully catch you. Or I wanted to come by before dinner just to see if I can catch you. My name's Russ Fitzpatrick. I just sold the house on Fifth Street right around the corner. We did a lot of great marketing for that house and we generated a lot of activity on that house. The funny thing is I continue to receive inquiries on Eagle Trace, even though that one is sold. Is there any chance that you would consider selling this house uh, in the next three to six months if the price were really right? Is that something that you would consider? Before you throw the old kook out of this meeting and tell me that I've lost my marbles, I would suspend your disbelief and start to realize that every 20 doors, someone says, you know what? My husband and I were just talking about that, and we would really like to relocate to a four-bedroom home later this year. I don't think we're ready right now, but um, yeah, we probably would consider something in the next three to six months. What you do from that point forward is going to dictate whether or not you get that listing, but Door knocking around just solds is vital. Now watch this small shift in red ink. Good morning, my name is Russ Fitzpatrick. We just sold the house on Fifth Street right around the corner. We did a lot of great marketing. We continue to receive inquiries. So if you're one of those emerging residential real estate professionals online today that doesn't have a strong I story, I can really you know, implore you to consider the I versus we mentality. In fact, the further you go up the food chain in residential real estate, the more we's you get anyway. The largest teams never say I. You know, I talk to the number two REMAX agent in the world. I talk to the, the top Keller Williams agent in the world. I was just in a room with the number one Keller Williams agent in the world. He doesn't say I, I, I. He says we anyway. So get in the habit of saying we now. You're going to shoot me again, but telemarketing around a listing that's just sold, that's my script. I've used it for years and it works famously. Hello, my name is Russ Fitzpatrick from XYZ Real Estate. The reason for my call is simple. We were just, we just successfully marketed and closed on the Fillmore's house around the corner from you. We enjoyed the highest price per square foot in the history of Eagle Trace and the Fillmore's were absolutely thrilled with this process. The big surprise, apologize for the typo. Um, for the Fillmore family, with how much house they can afford with these historically low interest rates. If the price were right, where would you move? I mean, if you could move anywhere in the world or anywhere in this county or anywhere in this state, where would you move if we could get your house sold? Just see how many conversations you can have centered around the Fillmore house 
that you just sold or that your broker just sold and start to say to yourself, time on task over time. If I were to make 10 just sold voice to voice contacts per week, would I, would the snowball start to build in size and volume? And would the snowball start to build in momentum? And I think that it would be hard to fib to yourself that it wouldn't pay huge dividends right now while the listing inventory is so incredibly valuable. Door knocking hot leads. These are for sale by owners, expireds, and list pendants notifications. I want to add to this, this new phenomenon that I can go on CoreLogix, I can go on my Broward County site, I can go on my tax assessor site, and I can pull up list pendants notifications today. These are families that are facing foreclosure. I can pull up all the probate cases that are filed with my county today. I can pull up all of the divorces that have been filed and then cross-reference them to the properties that they own. And there's one story I'm gonna tell you here in a minute. I think it's my next slide that I learned in New York State of an agent that sells 300 closings per year, 300 sales per year by an agent, not a brokerage. Can you think of any reason why these for sale by owners, these expireds, these list pendants, these probate cases and these divorce cases might be more likely to say yes than the, the, the just listed and just solds around the neighborhood? It's because they've already been identified as someone who's looking to move or needing to liquidate their real estate. So the only thing that would be better than door knocking on those hot leads would be to telemarket them, you know, because, and the only reason it's better to telemarket than it is to door knock, in my humble opinion, is because you can hit more people per hour. Um, so on this sheet, and I'm going to go back, for sale owners, expireds, list pendants, probates, and divorces, right? <clears throat> 25 people I know that make over $400,000 a year in the residential real estate space call the expired listings. And 100% of the people that I know that make less than $50,000 a year don't. <laughs> so success leaves clues. And if the expired listings in your market are going to be plentiful through 2022, the for sale by owners in your market are going to be plentiful again. There's probates and divorce cases that are filed in the tax returns and list pendants. Well, I started to say it on the last slide. I just met a guy in New York State that sells 300 homes a year. And guess what he does? He and I were fast friends, buddy, because he cold calls every single day, as I did for 35 years in residential real estate. And if cold calling is not for you, you're looking at it the wrong way. Start to frame it as a teacher, as a consultant, an advisor, and a friend. Stop being so attached to the outcome and judging every call, whether it was a winner or a loser. Start just to think of it as time on task over time. And the results will start to pile up and the momentum and your confidence and swagger will start to build. We're into number seven, and I want you to hear me around the affordable housing community in your market. I do not believe that you should be using door hangers in a luxury or executive level community. But I just met a Keller Williams agent in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, who sells about 30 houses a year, makes a very formidable living. And he had always worked in Parkland and Coral Springs, which were very affluent sections of our county. And he started to work in a little community called Tamarack. And when I sold those Tamarack houses, they were 140 to 185. Today, he's selling those Tamarack houses for 285 to 395. And so they still pay, you know, eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 each sale. But if you go into the affordable housing market with these little door hangers that hang over the door knob, it is one of the most formidable and affordable marketing acts you can do. Now, the number, certainly a top 20 Berkshire Hathaway agent in the state of Florida, I, I believe he was climbing in and around number five in the state for a while. I'm not going to mention his name, 
but he works in Coral Springs in Margate, Florida. I've known him since he was a bartender at Olive Garden. And just recently on his Facebook page, he showed his followers and his team that he was physically out delivering door hangers in an affordable section of Broward County. And we all chimed in, all the old guys chimed in and said, man, can't, you know, going back to the old, you know, standby, right? And I will tell you that 2022 following COVID is going to be much more intimate, much more hyper-local, much more um, small town vibe that you can create within your communities. So a little door hanger that says, I just sold the three bedroom home around the corner and I still have families shopping here is a great way for you to hit maybe a thousand families in a weekend with your message and, and produce something. Again, in the affordable farm area, when you do it the same community over and over and over, like my friend uh, in Tamarack is doing, he uses a similar message on every door hanger. He uses a similar photograph, the exact same photograph, the exact same logo. And then he hits them once a month over six to 12 months. This is a great way to build a following in a two hundred dollars to $300,000 farm area where the houses are a little more affordable, a little closer together, a little less, I'll just say snooty, just a little bit more kind of blue collar, you know, areas. I really believe in my heart that I would rather sell 10, $200,000 houses than one $2 million house. You might disagree with me and think I'm re ridiculous, but I'm telling you, 10, $200,000 houses produce 10 times the number of referrals, 10 times the number of personal uh, sphere of influence relationships, and 10 times the past customer relationships than one $2 million homeowner. And for my money, I would really rather negotiate a 6% commission on a $200,000 house than be forced to make all kinds of cuts and compromises with a high-priced property when the seller you know, may or may not appreciate the work I'm doing. I know I'm discouraging some of my luxury ambitions out there, but if you want to get what you've never gotten, you've got to do what you've never done. So we're into the top five now, and there is a wave of foreclosures coming. 1.8 million families are in forbearance right now, somewhere between 1.8 and 2.5 million families are facing some risk of foreclosure. And the, the highest volume of foreclosures that's going to hit the residential real estate market is going to be in 2022 from the results of unemployed, underemployed, uh, deaths in the family, uh, illnesses in the family, divorces in the family. While they were under forbearance, a death happened, a sickness happened, a job loss happened, and they're just not going to be able to escape foreclosure. I'm not celebrating that, and I'm not creating a gloom and doom scenario that said that we're going to have a bubble, but I just hosted a South Florida event, I think it was in Delray Beach or, or Boca, and the REO asset manager applications are starting to heat up, meaning the smartest bird's eye perspective realtors are starting to make applications for REO asset managers, and I would advise you that REO listings are going to make up one of the top five sources of income for realtors in this country uh, during 2022 and a little bit beyond that. I want to point to number four, which is a little different than social media in general. It's this idea of using landing pages and, and specifically long form landing pages on social media. It's not good enough to have your customer click on your social media or like it or comment on it. What you need is a long form landing page. So at Animac Works, we run Stop Renting Now. It's a landing page that produces leads. Uh, we run off market properties to produce inbound long form leads. We use renovation real estate fixer uppers to induce long form inquiries. Move with your pet, first time home buyers. Grants, down payment assistance, free staging analysis before you list. These are the long form landing pages that are producing tens of thousands of leads for realtors all over the country. And we believe that social media is the main street of residential real estate today and that your sphere of influence 
I want to say this at the risk of being booed off stage somewhere. Even if you never got a lead, it would be worth doing them. I'm going to say that again. Even if you never got a lead from your social media landing pages, they elevate your credibility in the hearts and minds of your friends and family. When they see consistently proactive, career-oriented posts that drive decision makers to you, they see you differently in residential real estate. So your sister's cousin's brother's friend will call you because he saw that you were consistent in your social media. So I would, at the risk of being gutted here, tell you that those social media landing pages are probably number four in the entire real estate industry for what you could be doing differently with five or six posts a week that feature these types of landing pages. And even if you just did one a week, your friends and family and your sphere of influence and your past customers are going to see you as a more credible career-minded realtor. Hyper local neighborhood newsletter. Boy, is that a mouthful. Hyper local neighborhood newsletter published specifically for a homeowners association gives you a captured audience with high readership and high relevance. It's highly relevant copy to that homeowners association. There's a labor intensive process. It's going to take you 10, maybe even 20 hours a month to build your newsletter, to publish a newsletter. But you, if you have an affinity for creative writing, if you have an affinity for going out and getting a network of business owners that also want to be in your newsletter, you know, would the pizza company around the corner want an ad? Would the roofer that you do business with want an ad? Would the condo association manager want to print an editorial in the ad? Would the treasurer like to have a place to put the financials for the homeowners association or the condo association? The answer to all those questions is yes. The bigger question is, are you the type of person that would make a commitment, a long-term commitment, time on task over time, over the next 12, 24, 36, 48 months to do 10 to 20 hours a month of work to build a, a, a two-page flyer for the homeowner association or a four-page bifolded ledger piece of paper that makes like almost looks like a church bulletin. Well, we teach a class on neighborhood newsletters on AnnieMacWorks.com. It's an absolutely free course. And one of my favorite Remax realtors in the world is in uh, Punta Vedra, Florida. She and my buddy, Michael Cancio uh, from Animac, developed a homeowners association newsletter that goes out to about, I don't know, 2,000, 2,500 families. And the camaraderie of the vendors that are in that newsletter, you know, you could have one day a month that all the vendors that advertise and they have to come together and deliver. So they're hand delivered to each homeowner. Or each vendor has to pay a little bit more, so they're direct mailed to every homeowner. But hyper-local is the only adversary that has a chance against Zillow. It's the only adversary that has a chance against Realtor.com. It's hyper-local. So if you get hyper-local and you do a neighborhood newsletter, especially one that, that, that cooperates with the association, you're into a realm of residential real estate in 2022 and beyond that represents that small town camaraderie and that that real definition of hyper local which is a neighborhood newsletter try to be the only realtor in that newsletter and you'll have fantastic uh, success number 2 as we approach the drum roll please Probably no surprise that website SEO and Google pay-per-click AdWords are going to be in the top one or two, probably for the rest of our, our careers. But instead of paying your, your real geeks and your sync accounts and your Ylopu and Torch accounts, instead of paying your Boomtown 
leads accounts to sell you leads, invest a little extra to make your own compelling website. I know I'm preaching the choir for a lot of you that are online today, but generate and capture your own leads from Google Pay Per Click and generate and capture your own leads from organic SEO marketing, and you'll have a lower cost per lead than these companies that have to add on a, a, a premium or a VIG on top of your lead spend in order for them to build profitability. And believe me, these companies, most of them on your screen right now, are multi-million dollar, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in realtor revenue buying those leads that you could easily produce and capture on your own if you would just study uh, you know, a, a, a website development resource and build out your own SEO and your Google AdWord pay-per-click budget. The last one I want to talk about for just a few minutes, and I hope it resonates with you. Boy, howdy, I have watched this unfold. One of my favorite social media influencers in real estate is a lady named Cece Underwood. I don't know if she knows what a big fan I am of hers, but she's right in the, the Maryland, D.C. market, I believe. Uh, she might be closer to Ocean City in, in Virginia. But I just get such a lovely, lovely kick out of the way that Cece Underwood represents her industry. She's filled with passion. She's filled with energy. She's filled with enthusiasm. And guess what, guys? If you're not filled with passion and you're not filled with enthusiasm and you're not filled with energy, you're going to have a hard time in any business that you enter. So you might want to step up your passion, your enthusiasm, and your energy anyway. Oh, that's not me. Well, get a load of some of the TikTok posts that CC does. Get a load of some of the posts that... Um, some of the social media influencers that happen to be in real estate do across the country. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a little quick picture for you, how you can become the social media influencer for your local market. You want to get hyper local with your scripts. We want you to provide insight that the homeowners of that community would be interested in, regardless if it's residential real estate related or not. When you become a hyper-local social media influencer, you're talking about the new dog park that's opening up. You're talking about uh, a pet rescue. You're talking about a church activity or Little League sports happenings. You know, if you came on and you said Billy Madison hit a home run in the fifth inning of the, of the, um, of the Little League game yesterday, and you said it with enthusiasm and energy, and you were... You know, you you bookended it with, I'm your, you know, local expert on all things Tamarack. You know, it, it just sets you apart as a residential realtor. And if you said, hey, I want to tell you about a new pizza joint that just opened up here in Tamarack. I just came there. The owner's great. It's a small family owned business. Try to shop local. Try, try to stay local. And let's get together and, and, and support our local businesses. See this? Highlighting local businesses creates a camaraderie and a pride between the fellow business owners. I want to tell you about a roofer who just did some work for me. If you're ever going to, it's this educational and informational aspect to your social media influence that, that transcends residential real estate. You're becoming a community leader and you're leveraging all of your social media platforms to become that community leader. It is an ambitious undertaking, but there are role models across the country that you can study on social media. You can watch Cece Underwood. She's cute as a button. She's doing her thing. She's, she's, she's educating and, and, and entertaining and passionate about residential real estate and her production shows, but there's a hundred of them. And I'm sure that this year, one of our National Lunch and Learn League events sponsored by Annie Mac Home Mortgage will be how to become a social media influencer in your local market because we believe in competition directly, in direct competition with Zillow, Realtor.com, and 100 fintechs that are coming after them. You must represent a hyper-local, intimate level of expertise in your residential real estate enterprise and social media influencer is the goal of it all. So make sure to leverage all 
of your social media platforms when you go out with these scripts and dialogue and videos and posts and yes, even TikToks to let these cons- consumers know that you're full time, you're career oriented, you're passionate about real estate, you have a high level of integrity and energy about you, and you care about the local businesses and the local homeowners in your market. You will be glad you did. My name is Russ Fitzpatrick. I want to invite you to Bulletproof Business Planning next month for the National Lunch and Learn League. We're going to be doing some six-figure business planning with our real estate professionals. We're going to help you try to figure out what the right business plan is for you. We're going to give you some of the guidance and best practices that go along with today's sources of business. And last but not least, we're going to help you put some real passion and conviction behind your personal business plan so it doesn't just end up in a drawer by February and ignored from that point forward. Um, My company is called Annie Mac Works. We work for you. Our success is measured by yours. And I want to show you those last four logos at the bottom. You can gain your real estate staging expert designation from Annie Mac Works free from any charge. You can get your pet friendly real estate agent certification free from any charge through Annie Mac Works. You could become a residential renovation real estate expert with our real estate certification known as Renovation Real Estate. And last but not least, on the far left, we've got an entire suite of technology that's free from any charge for you as a realtor. As long as you're an active, licensed board member in your local market, we are here to support you. My name is Russ Fitzpatrick, and I'm one of the lucky founders of Annie Mac Works, sponsored by your mortgage professionals at Annie Mac Home Mortgage. Thank you very much for being here.